Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Ouch, 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 ouch. Something got my foot. <laughs> anyway, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this up and that uh, we all can each think and however we are led to by your Holy Spirit and uh, whatever I do with this and whatever it's for. Um, I'm going to do it and then put it in your hands and if anybody ever watches it and just, that's all, I'm just doing it all at you, whatever. Anyway, so, uh, howdy doody. So, what I'm saying here is, um, that, this is kind of a new thing here I'm going to try. It's kind of like a, uh, scriptural thought uh let's see deep word deep word thought <laughs> anyway, um so let me get into it because it's gonna take long enough already if i take too long um what i'm gonna do here so i'm gonna switch over this and do, oh. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm down a little bigger. That way you can see my goofy face. <laughs> All right. you're already reading here. <laughs> Antichrist. Um, so, might as well jump in because you might already be reading it. <laughs> so this is my notes that I was, I was writing down. Um, just how, sometimes I feel really annoyed when people are always waiting around looking for the third temple to be built in Jerusalem for so that a man Antichrist can sit in it and claim to be God. And, uh, whether that ever really happens or not, that's besides the point to me. Because it, to me, it's not as necessary as it is to other people to see that. Um, I'm going to try and get into it here so you understand what I'm saying. Uh,. Say, what do people think? Okay, yeah, here's this thought here. Let me pick my nose for you. <laughs> what do people think it feels like to create a video game, a virtual world, and or a digital reality such as the metaverse, even to write a fictional novel or put a story behind a painting? This is using one imagination to be a creator and relating to God. But to create a virtual world that one can even enter into and be a part of as God incarnated into one's own creation. As well, attempting to create this avatar as a coexisting consciousness with its creator from outside the creative virtual world with the belief of living eternally through and in this virtual false reality. Hmm. You follow what I'm saying? See, I've written, I've written novels, worked on comic books, uh, played around in the 3D world, Second Life. I remember being on that for a little while. And um, playing a lot of RPG games, and the feeling that you get when you're in there, and, and it, like if you could just imagine creating it, um, it, it it makes you feel like God. Here, look, to be like God, sitting outside of a world that one created 
in which they have complete control over, one could build and build upon it or pull the plug as desired. No limitations other than the coding that one originally creates to bring the world into existence and hold it together. And what I mean by that is, so you're, you're, you know, you do the ones and the zeros and you make the game. There are boundaries and limits and things that you can probably do or not do in the game. Um, the virtual world. It's like, uh, I'm relating it to God. So what does God do? He creates everything. And he, he says he won't go against his own laws or his own um, things that he actually put into play that make this existence be what it is. One could build and build upon it. Okay. Um, one could even enter into this world through their own digital avatar don't know what anyone else is thinking about that, but it sure sounds like a false existence, a true reality to me. So, like, you know, Jesus, God, came down and through Jesus entered into this world to die for our sins, right? So, you made this video game, this alternate world, this virtual reality, and you create an avatar. You are living through that avatar in that world, right? You see in this resemblance here, okay. So maybe it takes a bit of contemplation, but it makes plenty of sense to me. With that in mind, who or what sits in the hearts of mind and minds of man? Like right now. Like right 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 now. <laughs> in the now. In today's time. In the third temple, which is us. This is the third temple. Get that in your head. That's very significant. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the spirit of the Antichrist? It's not the same as Antichrist spirit, which denies who Jesus truly is, as the Son of God who literally came to earth, died for our sins, was raised from the dead, and now sits at the right hand of the Father, reigning as king forever. The lowercase a, Antichrist, won't acknowledge who Yeshua truly is. The capital A, Antichrist, acknowledges Yeshua as who he is, but feels he should be as God, his own God. And as the pride, has the pride to think he can be better without the need of Yahweh and the blood of Yeshua. This is the Antichrist spirit we now see sitting in the temple of Yahweh today. Is it not? I keep saying that if a temple is built in Jerusalem and a man sits in it, claiming to be God, then fine. whoop be doo <laughs> whoop be doo It really doesn't mean anything that people think it's supposed to. Uh, it is not the real temple of God. It is a distraction and decoy. Wake up. So, yes, Paul said there was an Antichrist. There was always an Antichrist spirit with us. It's like if you look at the early problem of the church was the Gnostics. And the Gnostics would come in and say all these different excuses that, well, Jesus is God, but he didn't really die on the cross. He wasn't really here and present. He was here really only in spiritual form. Or Jesus was actually a man. He wasn't really God. But then he dies and then he becomes like God. All these little things, all these little tricks that that take away from who Jesus really is. Antichrist. Against who Christ really is and what Christ came to do. Um, I guess you've got those people that claim to be Jesus. Now, that's, that's Antichrist. But the, capital A, Antichrist spirit is is that acknowledgement. It's like, it's like Satan. What did Satan do? Through his pride and arrogance, he knows exactly who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He knows since the beginning who they are. He's been there, seen them. So did all the other angels... 
They gave up their first estate and chose to fight with Satan against God through their pride and arrogance. That is Antichrist spirit because that is the straight up of opposition against God. Uh, it says that anyone that tries to come up any other way is a thief and a liar than through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed for us. So, you think that you can somehow create an eternal existence through consciousness and AI and, and uh, whatever technologies you can come up to extend life and your your health and whatever it takes to live forever and climb up and to get into the heavens and oppose God and fight against Him. So, that, that is the Antichrist spirit. And if, if you pay any attention to the world today, the world leaders, the globalists, even your average Joe that doesn't really want to follow Jesus, this is what they think. This is what they hope for. This is what the world. And we don't want to give up the world so much. We don't want to give up what we have and what we can do and, and how powerful we can become. We don't want to give that up. So we would, through pride and arrogance, try to rise above, oppose Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus, and come against Him. <laughs> to try and replace Him. Um, and through like all the modern technologies and AIs and things that are going on with the the, the VA double X and the what what's trying to be what's trying to be put in here. What what is trying to be put in here and what is trying to put what's in here into something completely controlled this is Antichrist. Antichrist spirit. Beast system. That's fine. If you want to argue with me, call me wrong. But let's let me let me go through a little bit more of what I'm saying here. So why is everyone on Satan's side thrown in oh <laughs> this is my question. This is my question. Everyone sit around Okay. There are parts that I can see why people say and think that there's going to be a literal man. And that's why I'm saying whether there is or there isn't, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to come. Whatever. What I'm going to say is that it's not necessary. So why is everyone on Satan's side thrown into the lake of fire except the Antichrist? You make that make that thought may make you start thinking here because I didn't even think about that until I was in the middle of the night, like three or four in the morning. I kept thinking about it so much. I had to get up and start reading scriptures, and I'll start. I'll show you some of these scriptures in a second. It is because the church, okay, the church. I know everyone automatically points to the the Pope and the Catholic Church, but the false prophet, the church, um, which, yeah, the Antichrist, the Pope fits very well as a false prophet. And the church actually, then what is the church? The church is fallen, the fallen away church. I, I guess if I'm going to categorize that, it almost fits better as the whore. I mean, you've got, you know, Israel is, is in Scripture <laughs> referred to as the whore a lot. And um, Sodom and Egypt. I don't know, look it up. If I didn't put the scriptures down here, it's not that hard to look up. Um, well, what the, look up the, the relations between Jerusalem, Sodom, Egypt, whore, <laughs> and that. Uh,
me start reading some of these scriptures. Revelation 20.14 Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. By the way, I, these my scriptures are usually in King James Version. I, I, sometimes there are other versions that I, I like better and things like that. So whatever the argument is that you have, we can go there. I'm just not going to got the video control. All right. Revelations 20.10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake of that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And if anyone's name, Revelations 20:15 was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I think I'm still on this. Yeah. Revelations 19.20 And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet, who performed the signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone. Revelations 20, 13 and 15 And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Did anybody see the Antichrist in that list? (laughs) There's more scriptures to cover here, but... Now, I, I I said, well, okay. Here's here's a thought. So here's an attempt, which is not a good one because I I go back on it after I explain it. So is it possible then that what it is, the Antichrist, is an AI, a, a robot, so that when Christ comes and destroys it, there's no spirit or soul there that has eternal life to even throw into the lake of fire. But, I don't like that. I go, I'd go. i rather say that that's what the image of the beast is that's given life. See, it doesn't say the image of the beast is thrown into the lake of fire because that's probably what that is. That is the definition of that. The image of the beast is, the beast is also a system, a system of man. The governing system that man made, man, all the men that come out of the sea of people, the beast system. I'll get to that too in some scripture. But um, yeah, there's no, it's not there. So, I mean, okay, so it's like the image of the beast then, if, if if that's what AI is and it's destroyed, then, yeah, there's no real soul there, so that's why it's not thrown into the lake of fire. It's artificial, artificial intelligence, artificial life, artificial, artificial, artificial. So let's see what other scriptures I have. Matthew twenty five forty one. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, 
into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So there's more to say. Uh, this is this is who goes into the lake of fire. Right there. So moving on. Now here's here's your here's your if your people want support for the Antichrist. Here's the uh the best case scenario scriptures is <coughs> is Second Thessalonians chapter or, yeah, chapter two. And wait, let me see. I don't I think I have it written on here twice. Yeah. It's down here in chapter two. What's this one? Oh, Revelation thirteen. Let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go back. So that second Thessalonians chapter two, starting at verse two. It does seem to be the the uh best case argument for a specific man of lawlessness or son of perdition. But does man represent all of mankind? Does son represent those birthed from the seed of the damned slash ruined? Going into Thayer and Strong's, I can't say no because it appears it could fit. I'm not the greatest scholarly theologian, or linguistics guru. However, it is possible. It it it, blah, 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 blah. it makes sense to me. The only other possibility I see is that the Antichrist is the AI robot. Okay, I said that. However, I don't go. Okay, yeah, because uh, image of the beast. Hmm. Okay, I noticed. Second is. Okay, yeah, and it, it does. It starts out talking in more plural form, uh, as in the falling away. Then at the end, it is talking about all those going in the lake of fire and all those going to heaven. It's in plural. Now, maybe I am reading too far into it, but uh, I don't think it fits. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and read it. Um... That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, for that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, before I go on any further, I'm just going to start breaking it down as I'm going through here. Um, so the falling away... Uh, whether you want to argue about that or not, maybe some people do. It's, it's, that's been going on, going on, and almost <laughs> coming to its end. You, we're getting wheats and tares and goats and sheep are already being separated. And uh, that's just about done, too, if you ask me. If you ask me. But disagree. Whatever. So let no man deceive you by any means, okay, it's falling away. Oh, and the man, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, the way you read that, yeah, so you're, so you're looking for a specific man or a specific son of perdition. But we're talking about the falling away in the church. So I'm just saying, you take what I'm saying and see if, just see if that fits in your heart. If it don't, then there's that. 
but see, for me, I can see how that makes sense. So it's like, and that mankind, so that the man, the the human nature of man of sin be revealed, the sons of perdition, the son, the son of perdition, the son of perdition. Sons of God. I know it's not plural. The son of perdition. So who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. You see, so there is, it makes it sound as if there is an individual. And I don't want to go against this literal wording in here. I don't. But, um, in the spiritual sense, um, isn't that what everyone is... This is what's in the heart of man right now. That's what I'm saying. This is what I'm trying to get at. In the heart of man, right now, in the world, there is a falling away of those that are in the church, those who have thought that Christ, those who know who Christ are, now are falling away and that the sin, the man unrighteousness, sin is being revealed in man. The son of perdition, the son of perdition, this this feeling, this motivation, this thing that is pushing man from inside their heart. So, who opposes and exalts himself? Man is exalting themselves because of the spirit that's in them is of Antichrist above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is individualized. Each man, we are judged individually. I will stand before the throne of God on judgment one day for all that I am, all that I do, all that I thought. As will you and everyone else. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so individually, where that is worship, so that He, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing Himself that He is God. He me, as an individual, saying, if I'm the Antichrist spirit, would be sitting in my own heart, in my own mind, saying, I know who he is, but I don't care. I can be like the Most High. Just the same thing as Lucifer did. I just don't know that God's doing that good of a job. I think, I think, I, maybe I should sit in there. I could do a better job at guiding my own life through, you know, existence. Antichrist. Antichrist. <laughs> All right. Go back to the verses. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The thing that holds back, this is the hand of God. And I, I've always said the best example of that is in Job. The hedge of protection or whatever that, that Lucifer said, I can't touch Job. You, you're you protecting him. So God has to remove his hand, his protection. I, I get it why people want to say the Holy Spirit of the church. And the reason they say the church is because they want to get out of here when the trouble begins. And the Holy Spirit, I just don't see God removing the Holy Spirit until He's done. Until until every last name written is over. And uh, because the Holy Spirit's what draws Him, the Holy Spirit's what teaches, the Holy Spirit's what saves. So if the Holy Spirit's taken out, 
in the church, like the rapture, pre-trib rapture would like to say, but how does anyone get saved at that point? Because no one comes to the Father except the Holy Spirit first draws them. So if you take the Holy Spirit and the church out, and people like to think that someone's going to get saved through tribulation if that happened, does it say that in Scripture that that can, does that match? You know, the, the pre mid, the rapture part, not that, that can people be saved without the church and the Holy Spirit? So, you, they're not, where, where are they getting the gospel from? And where's the Holy Spirit that's drawing them in? And God reaching down and sealing them. It's, it's not, it's, it's there because the church is still there and the Holy Spirit's still there. But God's hedge, God's hand, has to withdraw. As a matter of fact, He withdraws His hand and then He puts in a delusion. You see? He moves His hand, gets the delusion, and puts the delusion there so that everyone that is not connected to the Holy Spirit, that is not... Uh, consumed into the Word, does not have the truth in them, they'll be deceived. And even the elect might be deceived. Some say, well, that's if they could. See, they can't. I just don't know. I don't know about that argument. I don't know. I don't know how to deal with that one. I, I, why not? There's a great falling away. Um... Yeah, you know, some there's the argument of whether you're once saved, always saved, uh, free will, destiny, um, elect, select. I don't know. Those are arguments that everyone can argue in scripture. So, so let's go on. <laughs> Okay, and now you know. Okay, let's the whole list. Okay, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. See, that's more explanation of that. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When he comes, he's, he, he's taking out all the wicked. If, if, you, if you, you get rid of this pre-trib rapture, and I think this makes more sense. So, we go through tribulation at the final trumpet, the seventh trumpet, it's like Exodus, and the Red Sea's parted, Israel goes across, and as the enemy's pursuing, the wrath of God comes by the Red Sea. Man, as Israel heads to the Promised Land. Yeah. But, um, so the final trumpet, the seventh trumpet, is being blown. As it's being blown, Jesus is coming in on the clouds. Those that were with him first are getting their bodies because they were already there in the spirit. They're now getting their bodies. And those who were remained and, and made it are coming up and, 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 and getting that new body at the same time as they come up and they're standing there with him to turn around. And the bowls are being poured out. The wrath comes. Jesus comes down. He's... he's, he's it's it's go time. It's end time. Okay. Uh, even in whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie 
that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See how this is throwing in everyone, like the church, the falling away, the unbelievers, the unrighteous, the man, the son of perdition, Antichrist spirit. It's all Satan. Like that. Let's see. So even him who's coming is after the workings of Satan with all powers, power and signs and lying wonders. And then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. So the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm saying right here. <laughs> I mean, I get it. If you want to say that there's a, just a one-man deal and a Christ, but um, and there might be. You put, all, but see, it's kind of okay. So you, the B system comes, and I think I've got this on here too. So the B system comes, and you get the um, the Ten Kings. Uh, The, the seven mountains, I've often said, is the seven continents. This is why it's over the whole earth. All of it. So these ten kings that are, are reigning with the dragon is what they're doing. Because um, the, the dragon gives them their power, their throne, their authority for a short time. With the beast system... So this is man, these are men, this is thing, this is the Antichrist, everything is this is the Antichrist. So these ten kings are reigning with the dragon. Now I guess you could you could say that the uh the dragon, Lucifer, is, is possessing someone. Um or that uh he he adds an actual form where he becomes one specific person that's here as the Antichrist somewhere that does make a throne there in is Jerusalem and tries to sit there to reign the world like a king tut of some kind. And I, I don't want to say it, it's not possible. I just, I'm just not all the way there with it. <laughs> it's not all the way with it. It's still... Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip this on Ezekiel because I can see I'm already almost at 40 minutes. <laughs> but he, he, yeah, he, yeah, let's just skip that all together. Oh, wait. I need to go back up here because Revelation's 13. There it is. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. See, that's what I was talking about a minute ago. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. See, the dragon gave the power to the beast. The beast system that's ran with by the ten kings. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? 
So he's calling the beast him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things of, and blasphemies. And power was given unto him. See what I was talking about earlier with a strong concordance. It doesn't differentiate between him, he, she, they, them. It's in, it, 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 I, I should show that. I don't know if I've got it pulled up right. Oh, it's Philippians. Um, well, let's just go right here. Let's find a spot somewhere in here. I'm not sure, so maybe if I find it and see it, then maybe I'll, I'll learn I'm wrong <laughs> as well. Um, yeah, let's just see if this one does it. Okay. Let's see. And the power of the first beast all he exercises before him and causes the earth and them which the devil therein to worship the beast. Okay, let's just go. Exercise before him. From the particle, perhaps akin of the base, with the idea of baffling wind, himself, herself, themselves, itself, he, she, it, the same. The strong from the particle, akin to the base, the baffling pronoun, self, used alone, the third person, her, itself, one, the other, mine, own, said, Self, them, there, that. You're getting the point I'm saying here, I think. Um, so let me just go back to my notes. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things of blasphemy. Power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. See, this is talking about the beast. This is the beast to beast system whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See? And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him the beast a mouth speaking great things and blaspheming the powers and was given unto him, the beast, to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth, and the beast opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and then that dwell in heaven. And it was given to the beast, everything in heaven. So, and it was given unto him, the beast, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. See, let's go back to this again. Okay. And I saw one of his heads, blah, blah, wounded after all oh, the world wound, wondered after the beast. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. 
And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Is it any clearer that what they're seeing is the beast? The beast, the beast is everybody. Everyone, the, the people that come up out of the sea, the system, the beast, the system. <laughs> that man, is that AI, the robots? It could be all that. All to, that could be that all together. Um. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna jump. I'm at 45 minutes now. I'm going to jump up here to Revelation 17. The beast, seven heads, ten horns, and the whore. The woman on the beast. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and then the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked, with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The mystery explained. I'm going to go before I go into this. <laughs> um, I know everyone always jumps right away to the Catholic Church because they like purple and scarlets and. They, they they martyred a lot of saints, and they did a lot of things bad. But if you were really to do an in-depth comparison of the Catholic Church and some of the rituals and the colors and the things that they do, and compare that to the synagogues, there's quite a few similarities. See, these Gnostics, the Jewish mystics, we follow them all the way back to Babylon. They really have infiltrated. They've infiltrated even in the Catholic Church. It's really, it's all mixed together. It's like, you've got, where's it, what's it, the mother of harlots. See, the whore has daughters. <laughs> and the modern day Protestant Church is actually, is part of that even. Sorry. But yeah, um, let me just try to get ahead of here. Okay. And the angel said unto me, "Wherefore didst thou? Why did? Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The beast that saw that thou sawest was and is not." and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. See, people get all stupid, tangled up into the... This person, that person, this person died, that person didn't, these kings, that, and everything. There's a lot of stuff about Catholicism that fits in there, yes. Uh, a lot of people don't look at the fact that, uh, so if you get a head wound, the statue, the first was Babylon, the golden head was Babylon. Babylon rises. Babylon comes back. Rome does. 
Rome, Rome is never left. It's still there. The iron mixes with clay at the end. Um, you know, the U.S. brought back the whole Babylonian thing. Uh, Israel is part of Babylon. Israel drug Babylon with them the whole... After being there, they they took it with them. What do you think Jesus was? What do you think he was complaining about? Seeds of the serpent, the sons of the you know their father, the devil, and the scribes and Pharisees and everything. You get really mad at them. Why? Their laws. What did they say in their laws? All these things. I know, I was going to make everybody mad. Let's see. <coughs> the beast thou sawest was and is not. Okay, bottomless pit. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. Seven mountains. Everyone wants to say the seven hills in Rome. How many continents are there? Many waters? Come on. I know that's people, too. The seas are people, too. But Seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh... See, kings... The beast, the beast and Daniel. They are represented by a kingdom and a king. They're both. So, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Not really saying what one way or another is, whether Babylon, Israel, United States, um, Rome. I think if you think about it, you can come up with your own ideas on who fits and what fits and the nations that fit and all these things. I've, I've thought it all out, but you can do your own little thing. <laughs> See, it's kind of like this. It's like, um, get my hands moving here. So, the, uh, okay, you've got the beast, and I, I've said this before. Okay, you've got the lion with wings, Babylon. What represents this? You know, <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, Babylon itself. Israel had has the lion as well. England has a lion. But here you get I think England even has the eagle, but yet then we United States is an eagle as well. So um before Revelations all the beasts come together as one. The lion is forced to stand, the heart of the lion is taken out and replaced with the heart of the man. And the wings are clipped. Then they can all come together as one beast system. You know, I thought it was odd. You know, some people think that the bear just has got his paw up like he's... Yeah. <clears throat> it's lame. It's limping. It has three ribs in its mouth. And whenever wants to question what the three ribs are, This is my thought. Those three ribs are the ribs that belong to the, the Babylonian beast. To have the heart torn out and replaced with the heart of man. The wings are clipped. See, that's why the U.S. will be clipped. That's why people don't know that the U.S. is in in the Bible. The Babylonian system is, and we're a part of that, and it's the daughter of the whore, but 
the wings are clipped before the system is put together as one. I don't know, just think about that for a while. Um, and the beast that was, okay, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The beast doesn't say that they're given their power over to the Antichrist, a man somewhere. They are men possessed by the Antichrist, Satan, the dragon. They reign with the beast. They give their strength, their power over to the beast. And then there's an image of the beast. Is this AI stuff we're talking about here? Iron mixed with clay? Oh, come on. The victory of the Lamb. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Are you seeing, are you seeing this? And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest is the great is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth now you could say that's Jerusalem but you could also say that's the spiritual form of Jerusalem the great city that reigneth over the kings of the earth we you say it's New York but New York is the most important city on earth next to Jerusalem um, Jerusalem pulls the strings for all kinds of things it's a center point a focal point um, not necessarily all God done. Man has done that. Um, give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. The woman, the woman which thou sawest is that great city. So this is what people have to realize too. So Jerusalem, in a spiritual sense, is a church. Um, Jerusalem, even though the city wasn't there, always existed. In a spiritual sense, it was God, it was His Christ, His people in Him. But when you think about that, it starts to become, uh, who's the whore? Who is the whore? The whore, the whore, the adulterous whore. This is God's, God's people, God's chosen, that commit spiritual adultery with other gods, with Lucifer, 
This is why at the end it's an antichrist. It's literally with Lucifer now. It's not these other fallen angel entities and gods and statues. It literally is with Lucifer they team up with. And the beast system themselves, the antichrist, the anti-Jesus and Yahweh spirit in man. Anyway, so I'm at an hour. And who will ever listen to this anyway? But I wish somebody would. <laughs> and, and, and if nobody does, whatever, I don't know. Look, the point is, is that if, if you listen to this, it's not on me. The blood won't be on me, then. Of course, then if I don't ever post this, then the blood's still on me. Well, I don't know how that works, but... Just know that these things can be taking place and are taking place. Just because you don't see it the way you want to see it, the way someone taught you, or the way the history makes you think the Bible explains it. Sometimes you just got to throw all that out and say, What is going on, God? What the Holy Spirit teach me? No matter what the cost, right? What is going on? Is this really it? Just because everything don't look the way you thought. You've got to realize. That's not how it works. You do want to look. It has to match the Word of God, though. It does. you really got to. You gotta, you gotta say, does this match the Word of God? And what I've said here, you can check me on it. But I do not think that I did anything that was against the Word of God. I don't. That's not in the Word of God. To me, it seems like it's in the Word of God, and it feels like it matches, and it feels right to help explain what's going on. And am I looking for something to fit what's explained, what's going on? No, I just. The, this is a, this is torment. The world is torment is crazy enough, just insane. And and my lack of sleep and things and thoughts and stuff bring me to scriptures and these ideas and 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 visions and things that I hear here and there. And this just happens. Here I am. This is happening right now that I just said all this. Why have I said this? I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that the VA double jabo is the mark. But here's what I say. You can have the jab without the mark, but you can't have the mark without the jab. And if you can't figure out what I'm saying, you have to really think about that. The people want to say precursors and pretests and all that, whatever. It's a part of it. It's in the now. I'm not saying that that's what condemns you because it doesn't. I don't know. I don't think it. I don't think that's. I don't. I don't think it's the end of the road because I think it's a part, a part of it. Now, if you join into the system and believe everything it says and does and tells you to do, then you're submitting and worship. I don't know. The best thing to do is just repent and go no further with this garbage that the world and Satan is trying to um, establish. Be no more in the delusion or a part of this world. Come out. Come out. Repent. Seek Jesus with all you got. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and be willing to lose it all. Because if you're not willing to lose everything, then you will gain nothing. You have to be able to, willing to give up your life 
to receive it. Follow Christ. Pass this test. Carry your cross. Lord knows I need help in doing all this. It's hard to keep my mind clear and straight with all this crazy madness going on. Anyway. I love everybody and I hope we get through this. And I, I don't know what's going to happen for each step and what's going to happen to this and that and blah, blah, blah. All these details. Blah. Look, just repent. Seek Jesus, whatever it is. Get the Holy Spirit, get the Holy Spirit, get the Holy Spirit. Read the Word, 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 read the Word. And that's it. I don't know what else to tell anybody. Uh, I am not submitting to any of this crap. I'm not listening to the na 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 The world, shut up, na 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 na. Shut up, world, shut up, shut up, Satan, na 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 na. taking and I'm not submitting to any authority. My faith is in the Lord. Jesus Christ. King of kings. Lord of lords. To Him is my heart, my mind, and my soul, my body, all of it. Love you all. In Jesus' Christ. Thank mm-hmm. you.